Baptist, and I think the YouTube is New Bethel Baptist, Georgia. So uh, just remember those. Um, Friday night, Franklin County High School graduates are going to be doing a parade leaving at 7 o'clock from the high school uh, to go to Carnesville, Livonia, Royston, Franklin Springs, and back to the high school. If you want to go out and support any graduates, you can go and do that. That'll be Friday night at 7 p.m. is when they'll be leaving. And then, of course, uh, we'll continue to do in the uh, Sunday uh, drive-in services for a little while. We uh, we have been talking, us, me and the deacons, about uh, trying to work our way back into the sanctuary eventually soon. But uh, just remember all that. Um, the preschool's accepting applications now. Um, so if you know anybody that would like to uh, have a child in the preschool for the next school year, still don't know exactly what that's going to look like. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But they, the registration is open. So remember that. And as far as our prayer list this morning, um, continue to remember Miss Ellie Frick. She's going to have some uh, test run and about her vision. She is still legally blind right now because of the condition of the pressure behind her eyes. So remember Ellie. Uh, Miss Bobby Banks, remember her? She has uh, going to see a heart doctor and will be wearing a heart monitor. Remember Miss Irene Miller? Uh, she's still dealing with leg pain and weakness. Um, Dole Cromer is back in the hospital. Remember Brother Dole, not doing very good at all. And uh, Miss Kay Parker, she's recovering from colon surgery and also has MRSA and other infections. She's in very serious condition. So let's remember uh, Miss Kay. And also, let's remember the family of Miss Mary Strickland as uh, she has passed away. So let's remember that family as well. And I know there are many others. Let's remember our nation. Let's remember our leaders. Uh, let's remember our health care workers and all of those that are on the front lines and these that are suffering uh, from this COVID-19. Uh, let's continue to remember them also. And uh, and it's like I said again, it's good to, good to see everybody out. Uh, this morning and glad you have chosen to come and worship with us. Uh, if you got your Bibles with you this morning and, and look, if somebody pulls up beside you when we're already started, if you'll tell them what radio station uh, to tune in, it's 88.3. It will make sure everybody can uh, get tuned in. Or if you, like we said, if you want to get your lawn chairs out and sit close to your vehicle, that'll be fine too. So, uh, but if you got your Bibles, we want to go ahead and, and get you the scripture this morning. We're going to be reading out of the 17th chapter of the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 17, uh, for anybody that wants to read along with us this morning, I'll give you just a few minutes to turn to that. And uh, while everybody's turning to that, I do want to say a special thanks. We've got a, a, a couple here that, that drove all the way up here from Cumming, Georgia. Some good friends of ours that we grew up with have known most our whole life. And uh, Tim and Terry Paulson, and it's just great to to have them here with us this morning and and uh, thankful that they uh, made the drive up just to come and, and worship with us and, and thankful that all of you are here. You're all special guests this morning, but we uh, we just want to thank everybody for being here. But it's always good to see old friends that you don't get to see uh, very much and, and just good to see their face and, and good to get to worship with them also. But uh, before we get started good, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to you this morning, Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of being here. Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for one more opportunity, Heavenly Father, to open up your word and, Lord, expound, Lord, through the gospel, Lord, that, that you have given us to share with the world, dear Lord. And, and, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this avenue that you have given us to share it with, Lord. And, and, and Lord, we just pray that you continue to use this, Lord, in a in a meaningful way, Lord, to reach out, Lord, to people, Lord, and speak to their hearts, dear Lord, and, and Lord, to change lives, and Lord, to save souls, dear Lord, and Lord, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for that. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you would take somebody like us, dear Lord, and Lord, that you would use us for your honor and your glory, and Lord, that's our desire this morning, is just to be used by you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, for everybody listening, Lord, whether they're gathered here with us, or Lord, whether they're Listening at home, dear Lord, Lord, that you would just be with them, Lord, that you would use your word, lost and undone, Lord, that today might be the great day of salvation, dear Lord, for today is the day of salvation. The Bible says to harden not your hearts, Lord, so we thank you and we praise you and we love you this morning. Forgive us when we have sinned, when we have failed you, Lord, be with all these requests that we've made mention 
I know there's many others, dear Lord. Pray, Lord, that you just work in every circumstance. Go with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us, Lord. Give us unction to preach. Lord, I pray that you place angels around this place and you fend off the devil and his crowd. Lord, let us just go to meeting. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter number 17. If we had a thought, I guess, above any other this morning, it would simply be battle-tested. Battle-tested. And I actually, I taught on this scripture back when we first started uh, maybe filling in here on a Wednesday night. But we... Uh, the Lord just kept bringing us back to it this week and, and, and just uh, just couldn't get it off our heart. And, and there's a lot in this scripture, and I pray that, that God will just help me to, to bring it out according to His will and His way and uh, and, and just uh, just preach what He's laid on our heart. But, but Exodus chapter 17, I want to start out, just read just a couple of verses in the first part of the chapter, and then we'll skip on down and, uh, and, and to about the eighth verse, and we'll start up there with what God has laid on our heart. But just to kind of set the table a little bit of what's going on, the, uh, the, the Israelites, they have, they have left out of Egypt, and they, they are on their way to the promised land. And, 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 and if you go and you, and you go back to where they came out of Egypt, you'll, you'll find that very early on in the process, they developed a habit, a very bad habit, of murmuring and griping against God. Uh, you you find, I guess, the first instant was where they were encamped by, there by the Red Sea and Pharaoh's closing in on one side and the Red Sea's on the other side. And, and the Bible said they began to murmur that, that, that Moses, that God had brought them out of Egypt and was going to let them die there uh, by the Red Sea. But we know that even God, through their murmuring, still delivered them. Now you go on a little further and you'll see that that, that they're going about and they begin to murmur because they don't have food to eat that they want to eat and, and, and they don't have flesh to eat. And God sends down manna and he sends down some quail for them to eat. So you see them murmuring there. And then in this in this chapter, in the 17th chapter, you'll see the third time. And look, they haven't, they haven't been gone from, from Egypt very long. Uh, they, and, and listen, God's done miraculous work in delivering them from the bondage of the Egyptians. But let's, let's read in verse number one. The Bible said, And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is that that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? So so here they are. They, they, they've come to Rephidim. They're, 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 they're in this journey. They haven't even gotten to Mount Sinai yet where Moses would go up on the mound and and get the Ten Commandments, and, the, and they're murmuring for the third time because they got to Rephidim, and they didn't have any water to drink. So they began to chide with Moses, and, 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 and Moses, he would call out to God like he always did. And, and, and let me say this today. You know, if, we, if we're going to stand a chance in this journey that we know is life, we have, we have got to learn to trust the Lord. We have got to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Not always are we going to be able to see the provisions of God. But I'm thankful that even though we may not be able to see them, I know that through my faith in Him and His power and His ability, that His provisions will come through just in time. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that we have a God that still provides for His children. But Moses would cry out to God. God would tell Moses, said, listen, you go, you go there to the rock called Horeb, and I want you to speak to the rock. I want you to take the rod of God and, and, and strike the rock, in a, and the rock is going to bring forth a stream of water. And Moses did that, and the children, the, the Israelites, they were, they were able to drink there of that water. But listen, during, during this time, something else began to happen. Uh, the Bible says, if you'll go with me to verse number 8, where we'll pick up at, you know, here the children, here the Israelites are. They're they're in the wilderness. They're thirsty. They're they're no doubt they're a little tired. They're a little weak. They're not accustomed to 
to maybe living out in the wilderness. They're not accustomed to, to this way of life. And then lo and behold, what happens is, is an enemy becomes and, and begins to attack them. So the Bible says in verse number eight, it says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar there and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And may God add the blessing to the reading of his word this morning. But, but there's a few things that God pointed out in this chapter that I want to bring forward this morning. First of all, I want you to see the fickleness of people. And, and, and we saw that. In those first few verses that I read, we as people are fickle. We, we, we're, it seems like, you know, God does something for us. He delivers us. He, he does a great work in our life. And man, we'll thank Him and we'll praise Him and we'll, we'll get in tune with Him for a little while. But then something happens. Some little storm comes along. Some little trouble in our life. And, and all of a sudden, we're, we're murmuring against God. We're blaming God. We're fighting against God. And, and, and listen, we're, we're, we're all, we are a fickle people. We still are, even in this day. I know people, it seems like they'll be on the mountaintop one day, and the next day they're in the valley, and they just can't ever find any stability. But listen, I want to encourage you today that whether you are on the mountaintop or whether you are in the valley, whether things are going great, or whether things are going terrible, put your faith and trust in God to deliver you in whatever situation you're in. Don't, don't be so fickle. The Bible teaches us that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. And, 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 and that's what God desires for us to do. So, so we see the fickleness of the people. And then, and then we see this, this Amalek character come into the scene here. And if you go back and you study out, oh, Amalek and the Amalekites, they were... They were a nomadic people. They wandered from, from place to place. And, and how they did, how they made their living, how they survived is they, they, they would go and they would find these, these people, these people that would be isolated, and they would attack them, and they would steal everything they had. They would steal their food. They would steal their water. They would steal their cattle. They would steal everything they had. So here, here comes the enemy. At a time where the Israelites, they're thirsty, they're weak, uh, uh, and, and the Amalekites, they, they know that there's not any water there for them to drink. So oh, Amalek thinks, here's my chance. Here's my chance to attack these people, these Israelites, and take from them everything they have. Now what he did not know, what Amalek was not uh, privy to, was the fact that God had already worked a miracle and sent them some living water. You know, there's times in our life that we're going through hard times. The old devil thinks, man, here's my chance. Here's my chance to finally destroy this family. Here's my chance to finally destroy this church. Here's my chance to finally destroy this marriage. Here's my chance to finally destroy this business. And the old devil, he thinks, man, I, this is it. This is my golden opportunity. But what the devil does not realize, I think a lot of times, is God will never forsake or leave his children, that God always makes a way that, that we have the strength through the Lord Jesus Christ to win the victory over the devil and all of his crowd. And listen, Amalek, I don't think he realized that God had already 
supplied the water for the Israelites. He had already replenished them and give them the ability to go out and fight this battle. So, so what happens is Moses, Moses goes and he finds this young man named Joshua. And I believe if I'm correct, that this is the first time in the Bible that you'll see Joshua mentioned. And the Bible says he tells Joshua, he says, Joshua, choose us out men and go and fight with Amalek. And I begin to think about that church. I begin to think about how we need some men and women that's got some fight in them. We, we, we need some people that God has chosen, that God has called out to go out and have some fight in them. I'm telling you, the more I look out into the world today, too many saved people, too many children of God have lost the fight in them. They've given up. They've quit. They, they don't have any fight in them. Listen, we need some fight in us today, church. We need to be like old Joshua. We need to not argue with Moses. But you know what Joshua did? He did what Moses told him to do. He went out and he chose him some men. And listen, Joshua didn't have a trained army. Joshua didn't have any skilled warriors. They, they had been slaves. They had been in bondage. They, they, all they had ever known was physical labor. They, they didn't have any, any trained army. But listen, today I'm telling you, I, Julie's got a saying that she says all the time. She says, God does not call the qualified, but God qualifies the called. And I believe that with all my heart today. Listen, I, I thought it was kind of funny uh, this week. I got, a, I got a magazine in the mail. And the title of the magazine is Preaching. And it's the, it's the, uh, the, the Journal of Professional Preachers. And, and, and I began to read through that magazine. And, and if I believed everything that I read in that magazine, I would not be qualified to preach the gospel. I don't meet the standards. I don't meet the qualifications. But I begin to think, I begin to say, God, hey, listen, you, you can take somebody like me that doesn't have all these qualifications that the world says that I'm supposed to have. But you can still use me to preach the gospel. Listen, there's nothing wrong with all that stuff they said you got to have. But listen, the most important thing that we can have is a call of God on our lives. Listen, it's not about all the earthly standards. It's, it's not about all the earthly qualifications. It's about what God has called us to do. And I'm a believer that if you've got some zeal about you and you've got some fight in you and you've got a call of God in your life, God can use you to do great things in His name. I believe that today. Too many young people get discouraged because they look at all the standards that the world has set up for them to follow Christ. And they say, I can't meet them. Well, neither can I. But guess what? I'm not trying to meet the standard of the world. I'm trying to reach the standard that Jesus set before us to love people and to tell them the gospel that he left for us and, and to preach salvation through the blood of Christ. That's the qualifications that we need today. And I pray that we would, we would get some people that had some fight in them like old Joshua had. Brother, he didn't have all the qualifications. He didn't have a trained army. But I'll tell you what he did have. He had a command from Moses to go out and fight with the enemy, and that's what he did. And I believe every one of us has got the command of God in our life how to fight the good fight of faith, to fight it with all we've got in us. Man, I tell you what, I love to, and I, and I mention them a lot, I love to go back into the book of Acts and, and read about an old preacher named Apollos. Apollos, he, he, wouldn't have, he didn't have it all. He didn't have all the knowledge. He didn't even have the whole story. But you know what Apollos did have? He had a zeal for the Lord. And he had a, he had, he had a desire to know the scriptures. And, and he had a power about him to preach the word. And God took that. And God used him as a mighty man of warfare in spiritual warfare. And God wants to use you today. He wants to use me today. Too many times we focus on what we don't have instead of what we do have. What we have is we have an almighty God that once he speaks to your heart and calls you to do something, he'll give you every provision you need to accomplish the task. 
We need to have some fight in this church. We need to have some young men that will stand up and preach Jesus and preach it hard and preach it real and preach the truth of it today, church. Why it seems like we, we developed a whole generation of preachers that don't want to offend anybody. Let me tell you something. If you're preaching the gospel, it's offensive. Listen, it still offends me when I'm in the flesh and I get in the word. It offends me because my flesh is contrary to the will of God. And I have to battle it every day. Oh, we need some men of God that will stand up and preach. Oh, listen, then if the word of God says it, oh, brother, we need to preach it. And if it offends, then it offends. Oh, listen, I know there's times for encouragement. I know there's times for feel-good preaching. Oh, brother, but there's also times for some help iron brimstone preaching also that is offensive to the flesh. Listen, we ain't here to please the flesh. That's not what it's all about. I'm not here to, to get your approval. I'm not here to make you feel good about yourself. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here to fight the fight of spiritual battle and how do people know that they need to change their lives if nobody ever tells them the truth of the Word of God. Let me say this. The God of the New Testament is the same God in the Old Testament. He has not changed one little bit. Uh, brother, I know we like to we like to we like to say that we're under grace, and I thank God. If it weren't for grace, I wouldn't be standing here this morning. I wouldn't have a chance uh, uh, to preach the gospel. I wouldn't have a chance to enter into heaven. It, it's by grace that I'm saved through faith. But listen, grace is not an excuse to live any way that we want to live. I, I believe the Book of Romans says this. It says, shall, shall sin abound, that grace may much more abound. God forbid, it says. Uh, listen, we need to quit using grace as an excuse. Uh, and we need to realize that grace, uh, uh, listen, is the ability for us to draw close to God and learn what God's true heart is to approach Him and see who and what He is and live after the example that He has set before us. That's what grace is to be used for. It's not to be used to live any way that we choose to live and then say, hey, I'm covered by grace. I am covered by grace. Uh, but thanks be unto God, by grace I can learn what the heart of God is and I can make corrections in my life that need to be made in my life. We need to have some fight in this church. The Bible goes on. Oh, Moses, he told Joshua, he said, look, why you go fight with Amalek, I'm going to go stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. The Bible says that Moses and Aaron and Hur, they went up to the top of the hill. And oh Joshua and those, those men, those, those men that he had chosen to fight, they were, they, they, they were gathered down there in the valley. And brother, they're, they're fighting the fight of faith. And, 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 and this war is going on. And, and here Moses is, and Moses has got Aaron and Hur with him, and, and Moses has got the rod of God in his hand. And I begin to think about that rod. What does that rod represent? Uh, to me, it represents the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it represents. It represents the power of God and the salvation. But the Bible said that as Moses held up the rod, that Joshua would discomfort Amalek. In other words, Joshua would prevail in the battle. But as Moses, the Bible said that his hands grew tired and, and, and the rod grew heavy and he began to let it down. And the Bible said that when he let it down, Amalek would begin to prevail. And Moses realized this. In church, it's high time that we realized that when we got Jesus high and lifted up, when we the, the, Jesus said his own self, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We need to realize that when we get Christ lifted up, where people can see him and his glorious uh, thing that he did for us uh, when he died, uh, when he uh, when he arose, uh, when he come forth, uh, brother, they need to see the glory of Jesus in our lives. We need to keep him high and lifted up so that all those out there fighting the fight, battling with the devil and all of his crowd uh, can see the glorious victory through the Lord Jesus and the cross that he died on. Uh, listen, the Bible said there 
uh, that old Moses realized uh, uh, that as he had the rod held high, uh, that Joshua prevailed in the battle. Uh, old Moses did like all of us do. Uh, bro, there's times we grow tired. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. There's times uh, uh, trying to prepare to preach the gospel just wears me out. There's times I think, Lord, if I could just quit, I'd quit. If I could stop, I'd stop. But you know what? I ain't found no quitting place. I ain't found no stopping place. No matter what the world may tell me, God still called me. And as long as God's called me, I'm going to do my very best to fulfill God's will for my life. But the Bible said there that those two men, Aaron and Hur, they had, they had journeyed up with Moses to the top of the hill. And the Bible said, I think they recognized what was going on too. So you know what they did? They found a stone and the Bible said they rolled that stone under there and they put it down under Moses and they set him on that rock. Uh, folks, I, not only did I see the fickleness of the people and I saw the fight in God's warriors, uh, uh, brother, I see the firm foundation that we need to plant ourselves on uh, so that when we grow weary and we grow tired and we can stand in our own strength, we can lean on the foundation uh, of the chief cornerstone uh, of the, 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 the block that the builders lay that is the Lord Jesus Christ and His gospel today. Brother, I'm thankful I've got a firm foundation that cannot be shaken. It cannot be moved. I've got a cornerstone that my life is founded on. Uh, that, all, that, that, that if everything else in my life falls apart, the chief cornerstone will remain steady. And it will remain strong. You know, I was a, a neat little story. I was doing some surveying several years ago down just off the the Chattahoochee River where it flows out of Lake Lanier. And I always knew that, that my dad's family, that's where they were born and raised, Dad, and kind of in that same general area. And we were, we were way off back in the woods, and we found some ruins of an old home place, an old home place. And all you could see, you know, you, 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 would, you would see the jonquils bloom, and you'd see some of the flowers that had been planted out there blooming. And, and you could see the old foundation of a house, and most of it had fallen over. But in one corner, there was a big rock. You could tell it had been hewn out into a square. We got over there and I looked at that rock and it had, it had my great, great grandfather's name inscribed in that rock. And I thought, you know what? Everything else about that house had decayed away. Everything else, you couldn't even see where it was. You, you could see a few stones scattered about where the original foundation was. But that chief cornerstone, that, that one place that they set and said, this is what we're going to build everything around, even all these decades later, still existed. Still there. Still with his name inscribed on it. And I thought about my salvation. You know what? There's been a lot of things in my life that I've tried to build and, they, and I got them up so far and they just come crumbling down. Maybe it was my career. Maybe it was my finances. Maybe it was my behavior. Maybe it was my preaching. I've seen churches get real big and then Satan get in the middle of it and they just crumble to the ground. But I thank God one thing in my life that has never crumbled, never faltered, is what happened to me when I was a nine-year-old boy when Jesus Christ saved my soul and become the chief cornerstone. And brother, if I'll build on that cornerstone and I'll build wisely with the guidance of the Lord Jesus, uh, brother, it'll be a building that'll stand and it'll be for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad I've got a foundation. But they set old Moses down on that foundation. They set him down on it. The Bible said that old Aaron got on one side and her got on the other. And those three men together, they lifted up the hands of Moses with the rod of God. And the Bible said they held it high until the going down of the sun. Listen, the Bible, and that sun was the S-U-N. But I'm telling you what, we need to keep Jesus lifted high until the S-O-N comes back to claim His church and to bring us home to be with Him. Uh, brother, we need to get together, uh, brother to brother, sister to sister, and we need to lift up Jesus all together. And we need to let the world see the only way to have victory over death, hell, and the grave is through your
your faith in Jesus Christ. That's it. That's the only hope we have. That's, that's the only way. It's just not through your church affiliation. Listen, it's not through my preaching. It's not through you being here this morning. What it is through is simply by your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the life that he lived, the death that he died, the resurrection that glorified him, and brother, the, the ascension that he made, and listen, the, the, the way that he's making for you today. That's what it's all about. Well, the Bible said they lifted his hands and they held them high until they going down to the sun. One day, the Bible promised us, us, he is coming back. He is coming back. And the Bible tells me that, that if I'm still here, I'll be changed and I'll rise to meet him in the clouds. Oh, what a glorious day that I'll get to be with my Savior. Listen today, church, until that day comes, whether it's in my lifetime, my children, my grandchildren, whenever we need to keep him lifted high until that day comes. He's coming. He is coming. The Bible said they held the rod high. The Bible says that old Joshua discomfited Amalek with the edge of the sword. Oh, I thought about today, church. How are we going, how, how are we going to defeat all the powers of darkness? Brother, we're going to do it with a sword. We're going to do it with the Word of God. That's what we're going to do. The Bible says it is sharper than a two-edged sword. Oh, I'm telling you what. If we're going to have victory, we're going to do it through the leadership of the Word of God. And as we learn the Word of God, the Spirit of God will bring the Word to life within us. And we can use it on the battlefield. Make sure Jesus is high and lifted up. Well, listen, the Bible says there that after Joshua discomfited Amalek with the edge of the sword, that God told Moses, said, I want you to write this in a book for a memorial. And I want you to rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. I want you to remind Joshua all through the years as you wander through the wilderness, no doubt doubt is going to try to creep in and, 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 and he's going to say, I'm not this and I'm not that and I can't do this and I can't do that. But I want you to rehearse it in his ear that I'm making a promise today that I will make war with Amalek from generation to generation. Listen today, church, God has promised you and I that He will help fight our battles. Listen, that we do not have to succumb to sin. We do not have to succumb to the devil and his crowd. Uh, brother Jesus promised us, uh, uh, listen, that He'll do battle with the devil from generation to generation. And one day, one day He's going to defeat him for good and forever. He'll be cast in the lake of burning fire. But until that day comes, you know this, you've got a promise. And brother, you, I pray that there'll be a preacher who'll stand and rehearse it in your ears from generation to generation. Uh, listen, that God's going to make war uh, with the enemy, that God's going to protect you, that God is going to bring victory into your life uh, through the blood of Jesus. No other way. I see it. Uh, listen. Oh, Joshua, as we know, Joshua, he would go on as they would wander through that wilderness for 40 years. No doubt, Joshua had every opportunity to give up, to quit, to let doubt sink in. But you know what? Joshua kept the faith. You know what? All through, all through the Word of God, there's, there, 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 there was just a couple, of, a couple of people through the journey of the wilderness that seemed like they never lost faith. That was old Joshua and Caleb. Oh, Joshua and Caleb, bro, they never lost faith. The Bible said that when they got to the edge of the Jordan River to just to get ready to go into the promised land, that God took Moses up on a high mountain and, and he showed him all the promised land and, then, and then how God took Moses home to be with him. And then he called Joshua to be the leader of the Israelites across the Jordan River. We know how, how the Bible said that old Joshua, he, he, he trusted in the Lord and, and he went in the Lord's mind and they crossed over. They went into the promised land. And, and I love the old story. Oh, Caleb, when they got over there, he came to Joshua in his old age. He said, Joshua, give me this mountain. 
Give me this mountain. Oh, Caleb, even in his old age, even after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness and putting up with a bunch of moaners and complainers and grappers, he still had enough faith in God to say, give me this mountain. For my strength, he said, is not gone from me. My strength is just as good today as it was the day we left out from Egypt. And let me say this today. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. If you've got breath in you and you've got faith in God, you still need to have some fight in you. You still need to have the determination to go out and fight the good fight of faith. Isn't that what old Paul told Timothy? He said, Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold, he said. Lay hold of salvation. Folks, we need to lay hold of the power of God that we've got, and we need to use it on the battlefield. See, too many of us, too many of us want to crawl into this building where everything, where there's padded seats and there's air conditioning and there's heat and there's, there's comfort and there's, and, 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 you know, and we're, we're used to it. We, we, we're, we're, we're comfortable with it. We know what goes on in there. And, brother, we want to come and, and we want to say this is where we do our spiritual battle at. No. No, not most of it. Now, there will be some spiritual battles fought in here. But I'm going to tell you where most of them is going to take place. They're going to take place in the hell holes of this world. They're going to take place in the valleys where people have turned from God. Where people have given up. Where people have turned to all the vices of the world. That's the place that we need to get out into the battlefield and do the fight of the good faith in us. Brother, we need to be soul winners. We, we need to be sounding boards for the gospel, the good news of Jesus. I'm talking about in the dark, the dark the places of the world. We need to wade in and we need to say Jesus came to conquer this. He came to overcome it. And He can and He will. If they'll just turn to Him and put their faith in Him. Oh, I pray today, O Cato said, give me this mountain. What Joshua do? Joshua gave him that mountain. And old Caleb conquered that mountain. Let me say this today. God has set some mountains in front of you. And listen, you're going to have to fight the battle to get to the top. But I want to tell you this. God's got great victory in store for his people if we'll just go fight the good fight of faith. You know what, old Paul, he would go on in the book of 2 Timothy. At the very end of his life, at the very end of his ministry, old Paul would tell Timothy, I fought the fight. I kept the faith. I finished the course. Oh, today, church, I want to fight the fight. I want to keep the faith. I want to finish the course. Listen, I, I want to be like old Moses when I get tired. I want you, and I want you, and I want you, and I want you to get with me. And all of us get together and get under the cross of Jesus Christ and lift it high and let the world see that Jesus is victorious today. I promise you He is, church. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're suffering, know this, that Jesus is on the battlefield with you. Listen, you may be a Joshua. You may be out there in the heat of the battle right now. You may be a Moses. God might have put you in a position right now that, that people are looking to you to lead them to Christ. You may be an Aaron. You may be a Her. You know what I love about old Her? You'll never hear old Her mentioned a whole lot more in the Bible. You'll never hear any, any great, great feats that he had. But you know what? He was there when God needed him. When God wanted to use him, he was there. When God wants to use you, you need to be in the position that God can use you. And that's being faithful and true to his will for your life. But listen, you may be an Aaron in a hurry. You may be the one that nobody sees and nobody hears about that just gets up under the load and helps people lift Jesus up. But whether you're a Joshua, whether you're a Moses, whether you're an Aaron, whether you're a her, listen, you know what they was also? There was a lot of bystanders. There's a lot of women and children. No doubt they was looking at Joshua and they was praying, God, deliver old Joshua. And no doubt they were looking up on the mountaintop and they were saying, God, give Moses the help and the strength he needs to lift up Jesus. You may think you're just a bystander, but if you're going to be a bystander, you be the best bystander you can be.
me. And you lift people up in prayer. that are on the front lines of spiritual warfare. You pray for them. You encourage them. You love them. You, you give them a place of shelter when they need a place of shelter. You give them a drink of water when they need a drink of water. You give them a morsel of bread when they need a morsel of bread. You do your part. Church, I'm going to tell you what. If we'll do this, God has promised us that He'll fight the good fight with us. That He'll help us. That He'll give us strength. Oh, we see, we, we see the fickleness. We see the fight. We see the foundation. And, and we see the finish. We, we look, Folks, I... I know how this is going to end for me. It's not going to end just well. It's going to end awesome. <laughs> you see, despite my inabilities, despite my lack of qualifications, despite my unperfectness, despite my sinful ways, it's all going to end with me living in glory with my Savior <laughs> and lifting Him up forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And that's good enough for me. I want to fight the good fight. I want to keep the faith. I want to finish the course. I pray that you do too. And I pray this morning. Listen, you may be here today. and God may be dealing with you. You may just want to walk up right here and pray. You may want to bow where you're at. You may want to get out of your car, out of your truck, get on your tailgate, wherever. Bro, we're, we're in a spiritual battle here. You need to pray this morning. I pray that you would move. Just move to God. And if your move is simply bowing your head right where you're at, that's okay too. That's a move. But I pray this morning. We, we're fishing to close out in prayer. And I pray this morning, whether you find yourself being, being one of these, being a Joshua, an Aaron, a Her, a Moses, or just being a, a bystander. But you realize that there is spiritual war going on all around us, church. It's everywhere. And I'm telling you, just as much as God is using this, this pandemic to bring Him glory, Satan is also using it. He's using it to destroy a lot of lives. He's, he's using it to, to convince people that it's never going to end and to give up and give in. He's using it also. So I want to know today, who are you going to give the victory in your life? I know who I'm giving it to. Old devil don't stand a chance right now. Because my God's too big and too great and loves me too much. But what about it? Who are you going to give the victory to today? You're going to give it to God or you're going to give it to the devil? So I'm going to ask you just for a moment, if you want to come forward, if you want to bow where you're at, we're going to, we're going to close out in prayer and I'm going to pray for you. But listen, I want you to know this. You have the, you have the ability to pray to God for yourself because Jesus made that way. He made a way that through Him and by Him we can commune with God through prayer. You, you don't need the priest. You don't need the preacher. You just need to open your heart and cry out to God. But I'm going to pray for you. But I want you to pray for yourself. And I promise you this, every one of us is somewhere in this battle picture. Every one of us is somewhere in this story that I just preached. You pray that God uses you mightily wherever you're at in it. And that He gets the glory. And he gets the honor. So let us all bow our heads. Let us all go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as we close out this morning, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, dear Lord, for your love, your grace, your mercy. Lord, I'm so thankful for your word that it's a living word, dear Lord. Lord, that it just opens up and it comes to life, dear Lord. And, and Lord, that you allow us to put ourselves into your, we can inject ourselves into your word, dear Lord. And Lord, even some thousands of years later, this old story about Joshua and Amalek and Moses and Aaron, it's still just as relevant today as it was the day that it happened. And I'm so thankful, dear Lord, that you have not changed. God, that you still love us enough despite our murmurings and our grappings and our fickleness, Lord, that you still uh, give us the unction to go fight the fight. God, I pray, Lord, that as we, Lord, as, as we draw closer to you, Lord, that we would realize, Lord, that it is expedient. Lord, that we get outside of our boxes, outside of our comfort zones, and, and Lord, we take the fight to the devil and his crowd. Lord, that we reach out to the broken. 
God, we lend them a hand. Lord, we love them and we pray for them. We encourage them in the name of Jesus. God, we show them where true salvation is. It's not through a pill. It's not through a bottle. It's not through a needle. It's not through a relationship. It's, a, it's not through all the worldly vices. But it's through you, Jesus. God, I pray that if there's people here today, God, that are bound and God, they're in this battle and they can't figure out a way out of it. Lord, that they wouldn't look to me, but they would look to you, Lord. Lord, that I'd just lift you up enough they could see you. And Lord, they'd look to you and you'd give them victory. And Lord, that you would give them a promise, dear Lord. And God, I can rehearse it in their ears. Lord, I'm thankful that I've got a testimony to go back to. God, I'm thankful that I've got mile markers in my life that I can fall back on and I can see times in my life there was no way out and you made a way. God, I love you and I praise you. God, I pray that you work in people's lives. You work in their hearts. You change us, Lord. God, draw us closer to you. Use us in a mightier way than you ever have. And Lord, we'll be thankful to give you the honor and the praise and the glory. It's the only name I know worthy is the name of Jesus. It's the only name that I've ever known to be perfect and always faithful. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for being here this morning. I pray this. Listen, if God has spoken to you God has done something in your life, saved your soul, child, whatever. Would he reach out to us and let us know? Not listening. It's not that I can glory in it, but it's that I can glory in Jesus. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this. During this day and time we live in, we need to hear some good news. Well, we need to hear how God's still working through this and saving souls and changing lives and mending hearts. And I'll tell you what, I've already heard of a lot of souls being saved during this, and I praise God for it. Pray that you have a blessed week. We'll see you Wednesday night online. God willing, Sunday morning, we'll, we'll meet back like this and, and we'll, we'll figure out something else when we need to. But hey, we're going to still lift. We're going to just keep lifting Jesus up. Love every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I know I know some of you drove a great distance. I, I, I saw, I didn't even know this here, but I, uh, uh, Vicky and Howard Foster, they, they were members where I pastored in Dawsonville. Thank them for coming and joining with us this morning. I love them dearly, and uh, thankful for their thankful for all of you. May you have a blessed week, and and uh, we uh, we will take up. I about forgot to take an offering up. That'd be just plum unbaptist to me. So uh, we got we've got our faithful old Bojangles box with us this morning. So I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get Julie if she will. And they just a little hole right there. You can just drop it in the. In the hole. John, did you bring me any fried chicken? You brought me an empty box last week. Any fried chicken this week? They still ain't got no fried chicken. So. <laughs> but, uh, but no, we thank y'all for being here. And I know a lot of you mailed in the offerings and all that good stuff. That's fine. Don't worry about it. But we do want to give everybody that wants to give today the opportunity to do that. Thank you for being here. We we love you. Pray that you have a great week. And uh, we'll uh, y'all can see me Wednesday and I'll see you Sunday. How about that? But love all of you, and may God richly bless you is our prayer. And what, what we'll do is we'll, uh, when you get ready to dismiss, just, uh, I don't know, try to do it as orderly as you can. Uh, you can go out that way or that way. Y'all y'all got in here, you'll get out of here. So we love you, and God bless you. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you?